Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Usually I like to, lie, uh, I like to start my sermons with a um, quick funny story. A small church was raising funds for a new piano. On Sunday, the pastor said this, whoever gives the most money today for the offering can pick out free hymns. So they pass the offering plate around and the pastor sees a $100 bill in the plate. He said, looks like we have a winner. Whoever gave the $100 bill can come to the front and select free hymns. An 80 years old lady slowly got up, walked to the front, and pointed her finger into pews. I will take him and him and him. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny, especially with my accent and my English. Like, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Last week, we learned about how to be influenced to be and do good. Also, how to influence our family. I spoke about the import importance of dating your spouse, even after you get married, after you get married. And I was so pleased to find out actually seven, eight ladies uh, last Sunday went on a date with their husband. Great job, guys. My wife now wants me to talk about laundry. <laughs> Just kidding. She wasn't. <laughs> Today we are going to look into how we can influence our community. Apostle Paul said this to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company corrupts good character. Which opposite of this is good company promotes good morals. Think about it. Good company promotes good mor morals. Timothy was a young minister, and we can find more about him in the Bible. He knew the scripture since he was a childhood. And we talked about this last Sunday, about how important it is to study the Word of God and to learn it. How important it is to teach our kids the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3.15 is saying this, You have been taught the Holy Scripture since childhood. And his grandmother and mother influenced him as he, we can see that in 2 Timothy verse, chapter 1, verse 5. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Louise, and your mother, Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. Timothy was a young man that wanted to influence people around him for good, to make a difference in people's life. He understood very clearly that for him to be able to influence people for good, he needs to serve God, because God is good all the time. And in this way, he understood very clear that the closer he gets to God, the more he understands and learns about God, better he's going to become, and more he's going to be able to influence others for God. Most people want to serve God, but only in advisory position. Think about it. So many times, even when we go to God in prayer, that we're supposed to pray to him, to ask for his needs and everything else, so many times we go to God and in prayer and tell him what to do for us. Hey, Lord, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Without realizing, we start advising God how he should run his business. God is not looking for more advisors on his committee. He's looking for children that wants to do what he called us to do and having a desire 
to do what he wants us to do. When I was a child, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Actually, I like to think that I've been raised by my grandparents. And I remember so clear about my grandma reading Bible story, tell me Bible story, um, going with her to prayer meetings and learning how to pray and how important the prayer is. But also I had in my life great youth leader, great pastors, great mentors that helped me understand how important it is to have a godly counsel or great people around us that can guide us to do good and to become what God is, wants us to become. Apostle Paul said this in Hebrew 13, 7, chapter 13, verse 7. Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Something that in today's world we get wrong, in my opinion, is that Apostle Paul is saying here, think of all the good that has come from their lives. So many times we are just discard good leaders that we have in our life just because they did something wrong. And so many times we are not paying attention to everything that came good out of their lives. Apostle Paul is saying this, think of all that good that has come from their lives. Just because somebody made a mistake, just because somebody did something wrong, doesn't mean everything that they said, everything that they've been doing or they did, it's wrong. We have to learn to focus on what they did good, on what is important, and what God was trying to teach us in those times, and follow the example of their faith. Imagine that you live in a town where nine out of ten households were occupied by active, genuine Christian families. Wouldn't it be easier for you to live pleasing to God in that society because of the strong influence for good in that community? Unfortunately, for most of us, that is not the reality. In today's culture, it's getting harder and harder to have good character, to have good moral, and stand up for it. And the Bible is kind of pretty clear. In the last day, or the more we advance, older we get. It's not going to get any easier. I know we hope for different governments to come and change things. We know, I know we hope for different judges to come and think, uh, change things. We hope for all kind of wishful thinking, I think, sometimes. But in my opinion, is that we, as a Christian, as children of God, have to develop a core value that we can stand on. That we can stand up and believe in it and not be shaken, not be moved, not be derailed by what's happening into this world. Today we are going to look at a few Bible verses from Ephesians and how they should apply in our lives. Ephesians 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Before this, Apostle Paul was saying that don't do this, don't do that, don't quarrel, don't argue, don't fight, don't... And then he's saying, instead, we will speak the truth in love. It's so easy to speak the truth, but not in love. It's so easy to just like, just do this, this is the truth, and the truth will set you free, and that's it. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think that's Jesus' way of telling the truth. His way of telling the truth is full of love. Growing in every way more and more like Christ. More we become like Christ, more we'll be able to influence people around us. More we become like this culture, less we'll have an impact on people around us. Like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Apostle Paul is using an analogy here, that the church is the body of Christ, and he is the head. If he is the head, that means he has a brain. And if he has a brain, 
He should be the one telling us what to do and how to do it. We have to pay attention to both of those. Not just what to do, but also how to do it. And just follow his ways. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The whole body that is made out of many parts, and each one of us has a part in the body of Christ. Connected together, when we are working together, we are growing together, full of love. How many of you like to just have a body when you are a child in two, three, four years old, everything else to grow normal, but probably a couple toes or a couple fingers to not grow at all? All have been terrible, right? I don't think I would like my child to have that problem. In the body of Christ, when we are coming together and we are patient with one another, we are growing together. And you know what? Some grow faster than others. But if we are patient, we are all going to grow together to fit perfectly exactly how God intended. Growing is painful. When we are coming together and work together to grow together, amazing, beautiful, wonderful things happen. In a healthy Christian community, we will find introverts and extroverts and people with different family backgrounds, cultural experiences, personalities, strengths, weaknesses, pains, and sufferings. Yes, I know, this can lead to a lot of struggles, misunderstanding, and all sorts of confusion among people who feel that they have little in common. But there is a blessing in God's design. It is a hidden blessing. Being in Christian community put me and you in regular contact with people who are different from us. People who are bold, outgoing, and confident. Their personalities can wear us out, can frustrate, it, frustrate us, can make us mad, but at the same time, they challenge us to talk more, to act more, to behave more, and to just get out of our comfort zone. Because, as I said, growing, it's painful. But growing, it's healthy. When we are in a Christian community, we listen well, think deeply, and make people feel accepted. While spending time in Christian community, we discover a lot about ourselves. We discover a lot about our shortcomings, about our sins and our failures, but also we discover a lot about our gifts and our talents and what God put in our life to be used for his kingdom, to be used for the church and for the community out there. Our personalities, experiences, and strengths challenge and encourage others also. God desires us to learn how to love as he loves, to love people who have all sorts of sins and struggles. God wants us to develop empathy and compassion. This kind of sp spiritual growth will only happen in a context where other challenge us. Today, I want to invite you to join my challenge that I'm going to take for weeks and months, maybe years to come. To be very intentional in not becoming like this world, but becoming more like Christ. It's not gonna be easy. It's so easy today to get frustrated. If you go on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or anywhere you want on any apps, you can get so frustrated and so mad so easily, but without realizing, you will start typing something or you can, you can start writing something and might be something not good to be posted online. 
Ephesians 4.29 says this. Don't use a fool or abusive language. Those are Apostle Paul's words 2,000 years ago that I think apply so much in today's world. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them or read them, I will add. Believe me, many, many times I looked at posts on Facebook and I almost, actually, quite a few times I start typing. And I type and I type and I type. But I developed a rule that before I post something, after I wrote everything, I think about it and read it again. Do you know how many times I delete everything that I typed before I post it? Think about it. Anything that we post out there is going to be there forever. I don't know if you know that or not. A friend of mine once said, actually it was probably two, two and a half weeks ago, so like, I cannot believe how frustrated am I am at myself for what I posted a year ago. Because Facebook brings kind of those memories, reminders, like this is what you posted a year ago. And she was so mad and frustrated. Not at what other people said, but how she responded to that. I think you and I are called to be little better than that. And what I really encourage you, it's let's start to develop uh, self-control in our lives. That we'll be able to think before we write or type or before we post. There's nothing wrong with writing and writing and writing as long as it's just for your own eyes to see. <laughs> And so many times, like I said, sometimes I wrote in journals and write, 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 and then, you know, I can throw the paper out, I can burn it, right? If I'm not happy with it or I'm not, I don't like it. But once what we post things there, are there forever. And it's not just because they're there forever, because if you will know me, I don't care. If are there, are there. But when it's hurting other people, then we are not more like Christ. We are more like this world. Because we are trying to conform with this world and trying to act as they act in this world. I know sometimes you can, have, you can be frustrated and you, can, you have the all rights because some people post or comment or talk about things that they are not aware of. Some people talk about free stuff without having basic knowledge about economics. Or some people just uh, heard something posted without knowing actually the true facts. And they were misled. They didn't have bad intention, but they were misled by other people. And then we are getting mad at them. It's true, they shouldn't do that. But where is God's grace towards those people? We have to be very, very intentional in becoming more like Christ. And when we talk, when we post, when we type, let's think little like, what will Jesus do in this situation? And bottom line is this, what we are saying, what are we doing, what are we typing, what are we posting, is that going to bring comfort? Is that going to bring uh, encouragement? Is that gonna build the other person up or is just going to be frustrating to them or hurting them. With some people you cannot argue, period. I'll be honest with you. Doesn't matter how much you explain, doesn't matter how much you uh, sh show them the facts, doesn't matter how much you prove them, they just don't want to listen. A wise man, Solomon said this once, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Solomon says that almost 3,000 years ago. And you can see it everywhere and anywhere in today's culture. People don't want to understand. They want just to express their opinion. And you know what? When you come across people like that, it's better to not interact. Because whatever you're going to say, Whatever you're going to do is not going to change their mind. 
And the best thing we can do for these people is to pray for them. Because only the Holy Spirit can convict. If we'll try to convict, we'll try to assume the responsibilities of Holy Spirit. And God didn't give us that freedom. But if we pray to God, God can convince them, can convict them, can show them the truth, can show them the light. But let's not try to be like this world and for us to be the one to nail it down and show them how they should do or what they should believe or how they should think. Again, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion. Ephesians 5, 4 saying this. Obs obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. These are not for you. These are not for us. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. When you feel like your blood is boiling, because there are so many injustices there, and sometimes we need to stand up for it. There are so many uh, people misled out there, and sometimes you have to try to lead them to God, or lead them to see the reality, to see the truth. But bottom line is this. We'll have to do our part and let God do his part. Because if we'll just push and push and push, the other people are going to push back. And then we are going to start hitting heads instead of allowing God to work. We have to do our part and then go to prayer for God to do his part. I know it's a tension between trying to influence the worldly and trying not to let them influence us. <clears throat> On one hand, we must not isolate ourselves so much that we cannot influence the last. On the other hand, we must not let ourselves become vulnerable to the influence of the world. And sometimes it's a very fine line that we don't know exactly how to walk. Ephesians 5.15 saying this. Verse 15 through 17. So be careful how you live. Let's not live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Let's make the most of every opportunity in, those, in these evil days. We have to be paying attention to our time. I'm not sure about you, but I'm sure that the days are getting shorter and shorter. And I get less and less done during the day. We have to make the most out of God gave us. And this is our time also. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. See, when we understand perfectly what God is calling us to do, what God wants us to do, it's much easier to follow his principles. And also, when we understand what God wants us to do, we are more successful in what God is calling us to do. Because we are fulfilling his plan and we are fulfilling his mission that he has for us. But so many times we are a little confused about what God wants us to do. And to be honest, today I want to just, as I share so far, it's about what we can do as a body of Christ in the church and outside the church. This is not just about us Christians acting with one another. This is about us acting with everyone out there. But I will be honest with you. It's much easier for us to be shaped in what God wants us to be when we are together in the body of Christ. When we are in the church, we have more grace towards each other. We grow together better and stronger. But we have our own challenges in the body of Christ to be able to allow this growth in our lives. Because let's be honest, we all are kind of annoyed by somebody, by somehow, by something they did. Not necessarily only out there, 
but in the body of Christ, in the church. And we get offended by little things. And I remember stories about people getting offended in the body of Christ, in the church, church member, about the carpet color they choose for the sanctuary, for their auditorium. Like, dude, it's a carpet. Let it go. We don't have that problem. We have linoleum here, so we are good. <laughs> but so many times we are little annoyed by little things, and we are losing big picture that God has for us. I really encourage you, let go to the little things that can steal your joy, can steal your relation with other people, and can just bring sorrow in your life. Let's be intentional in speaking and encouraging others. Next week, Kelly and I, we are going to tag team and share about uh, how actually we are influencing the world without realizing. And when I'm saying the world is just we are influencing people across the oceans and in other states and in other countries without even realizing in today's world. And don't miss next Sunday. Actually, it's our first time we are going to tag team. So uh, it's going to be exciting and scared in the same time. But my goal for us today is just to understand we have to be more intentional in using what God gave us to build the body of Christ and influence the community out there. And we can do that so many times just by being closer to God and have little more self-control in what we say, what we do, how we act. I think we as a Christian have to grow up. And when I'm saying that, it's grow more in our relation with God. Because somehow, somewhere, we left more the world influence us. We, left, we live more concern, scared, panic, uncertainty, and politicians, and all kinds of things influencing us more than actually we live, we allow God to influence us, more than we allow other believers to influence us. I would like you to just think about how much influence do you have from reading the media, listening to the news, uh, and how much influence do we have in our life from the Word of God, from the Bible, or from godly leader that you might have or have in your lives. We have to be very intentional to not allow this world to influence us too much and for us to regain the influence that we have from God to influence others for good. I would like to pray. The best way for us to influence our community is just sometimes by doing and being there into the community. Yesterday, I had the honor to uh, lead a group of 12 amazing people. And what we did was just raking leaves from four free elderly ladies that couldn't do it. And we partner with a nonprofit organization that their goal in ministry is to help elderly people to stay in their homes safely as long as they can. And it was so amazing. God bless us with a great weather. And for three hours, we were just raking leaves, 12 people. Think about it, 12 people times three hours. We put 36 hours in just raking leaves for three amazing ladies. To see their smiles, to see their gratitude, to see their thankfulness. And it's like, wow. This is sometimes how we can influence people around us. One lady was saying, you guys are doing such a great job. And this is to go to our youth group because our youth group, um, four amazing youth, and they were working so hard. And the lady was like, last year we had a crew here and they put together just one and a half bag of leaves, those 50 pounds big Menards bags for leaves. 
your youth did 14 bags of leaves. And just to see her smile on her face was worth it. Last Wednesday, actually, we launched our youth group and was amazing. We had 13 amazing youth that they are going to build relations, they are going to build bridges, they are going to build connection that they are, that are going to last for the rest of their lives. I'm looking forward to when they are going to get married, not too soon, when they are going to have kids on their own, not too soon, they are going to look back to those years and remember those. This is how we can influence our community. And so many other things, are so many non-profit organizations, are so many ministries that we can partner, that we can serve them, that we can do ministry together and help people around us and serve people around us. As I said earlier, God doesn't need people on their, his advisory committee. He needs people to serve our communities. And this is what we are going to look forward to do through Influence Church. Our goal is at least once a quarter to have community events that will go into the community and have projects that we are going to be able to bless them. This is what church is supposed to be. And you know what? More we are together, the more we can do together for God's kingdom. You can partner financially, you can give financially, uh, you can support uh, youth ministry to uh, finances. You can uh, look in so many areas that we can be a blessing to the community. Food shelf is just across the street and so many others. I would like to challenge you and think about it like, where can I put my time? Where can I put my money? Where can I put my effort to be able to influence people for good? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you made a way for us to partner with you. We are asking for you to just help us to influence people around us, to not conform with this world, but also to not be out of this world. Help us to be part of this world, but stand true to what you call us to do. Stand true to your word that you have for us in our lives. My dear friend, the easiest way for us to have good influence on other people, just like Timothy realized, is by serving God, is by giving our lives to God. And if you never did that, if you never surrendered your life to God, I would like to give you the opportunity to do it today. I did it when I was a kid. I did it when I was 14 years old and was the best decision of my life. I never ever regret it. And God always, always been there for me and for my family. If you are watching online and you want to make that your decision, also I would like everyone, close your eyes because I'm gonna pray for everyone that wants to make that decision today. Today is the day. If you never did it, if you never gave your life to Christ, today is the day that you can start a new life, a better life. If you are here in the auditorium and you never did that, I would like you to raise your hand because I would like to pray for you. Also, if you are watching online and you never did it, please pray with me. Jesus, I try my own ways and I felt I need you in my life because with you I can overcome any challenges I have in my life. Today I give my life to you. Today I surrender to you and I know tomorrow is gonna be a better day. If you said that prayer I would like you to reach out to us. Go on our website at influence.church. We have a great book that we want to give it to you for free that is called What's Next? And it's going to help you to grow in your relation with Jesus, with God. And it's going to help you to have a better life. Not necessarily easier life, but definitely 
a better life. And if I have to choose between easier and better, I will definitely choose better. Let's stand up, worship together.